If you are an individual contributor or are planning to be an individual contributor with HiveMapper, well, this is the video for you because we're going to cover everything from how to get the app connected with your Phantom Wallet and how to interact with the dash cam itself and best practices for downloading and uploading imagery, as well as how to troubleshoot some of the common pitfalls that I see across members of my fleet and well, things I've run into myself. Now, a couple of things before we get started. I do have a request form linked below. If you don't have a dash cam today and are looking to contribute, please take a few minutes to fill that out and I'll be in touch with you. And as always, nothing in this video is financial advice. All right, let's dig in. The first thing you need to do is download the Phantom app. And this is the most commonly used crypto wallet in the Solana ecosystem, which is what HiveMapper is built on. And when you click on create wallet, it's going to give you 12 keywords, which is known as your seed phrase. And the way this works is if you ever lose your phone or it's stolen, you can enter these 12 words in that specific order to recover your assets on your new device. But it's very important that you put these in a safe spot, because while one of the beautiful things about crypto is that you have custody of your own assets, that also means if you lose lose your access, there's no centralized entity that can help you out. So I always stress how important it is that you write those down, put them in a safe spot and never give out your seed phrase to anybody. Now, the second thing you need to do is download the Hive Mapper app from the app store. And once you have that downloaded, go to the bottom right settings tab and you're going to click on connect wallet. Now it's going to allow you to confirm in the Phantom app to connect the two. And then in the Hive Mapper app, you will see your unique Hive Mapper driver ID. Now you will want to go into the settings tab and disable the power saving settings because it's important when you're in interacting with this app that's in the foreground. And at that point, you're ready to unbox your dash cam and get it powered up. And it will take a few seconds to boot up, but you should see three blue lights pop up. And then you want to open up the Hive Mapper app in your phone and you'll see it says connect to dash cam Wi-Fi. Go ahead and click on that. And that will allow you to connect to the Wi-Fi of the dash cam. Now you can think of it as like a Bluetooth signal because it's not going to give you cell connectivity or a Wi-Fi signal and how we generally know it. It's literally just a way to tether your phone to that dash cam. And it allows you to transfer those images is over a lot faster than a Bluetooth signal would. But a word of advice for people with Androids, it's really important that you do this through the Hive Mapper app because if you actually go into the settings on your phone and connect to Wi-Fi that way, it can actually interfere with your cell connection and your ability to interact with other applications. Now, one of the first things I would highly recommend looking at is going to that settings tab once you're connected to the dash cam. And if there's a firmware update being pushed through, that's where you're going to be able to see it. But you'll see that percentage start to tick up. And once it's fully installed, it'll tell you to reboot the camera. So what you're going to want to do do is just unplug that camera for a few seconds, plug it back in, and then you're ready to rock. All right, now let's talk about what the lights on the camera mean. The bottom light means it's powered on. The middle light is the GPS because ultimately when you're collecting imagery, they need to know where the imagery is located. And this sometimes will go in and out, especially if you're in a remote area, but it generally will come back on pretty quickly. And the top light means that you're actively contributing and capturing imagery. Now, one thing to remember is daytime imagery is what matters. In this newest iteration of the app, you can actually see what time you can start mapping, what time you can finish mapping. So if you're trying to map outside of those hours, that third light on the top is going to be a little bit dimmer. But as soon as you get in that window, all three lights should be bright blue. And that means that you are contributing. And one of the best updates the Hive Mapper team pushed out is allowing the dash cam to capture imagery on its own without having the phone connected to it. And you can map for anywhere from say six to 10 hours, depending on what type of driving you're doing. So if you're driving on the highway because you're driving at faster speeds, it's going to be capturing more imagery to keep up with that. And it's going to fill up that memory a little bit faster. But if you're driving the city because you're driving at lower speeds generally, you will be able to map a little bit longer. Now, if that camera does fill up, one of the lights will turn yellow and that means you'll no longer be able to capture. So I highly recommend getting those images off the camera before that happens. And well, that's what I'm gonna be talking about next. So if you have the Hive Mapper app open and you're logged into the wallet and you are connected to that Wi-Fi of that dash cam, as long as you have the app in the foreground, you'll start to notice some numbers pop up on your screen at the very top. If you click on the top, it will tell you what those different categories are, but the numbers you're seeing there are the numbers of images that have been collected. Now on the top left, that means that those are images that are on the dash cam. Now the number in the top middle, those are images that have been pulled from the dash cam on to your phone. And then on the top right, those are images that have actually been uploaded to Hive Mapper. And that's really the goal here is to get the images from the top left on the dash cam to the top right and uploaded to Hive Mapper so you get credit for all the driving you're doing. So once you have them on your phone, there's a couple different ways you can upload them and get them to that top right corner. If you have unlimited data on your cell plan, if you go to the settings tab, you'll be able to go to the top and enable cellular uploads. So this actually allows you to download and upload imagery at the same time if you have the app open. The other option is waiting until you have access to an actual Wi-Fi signal. So let's say you get home, for example, you can plug your phone in, open up the app on your home Wi-Fi, and that will allow it to upload. And an extra tip for you, if you do recommend toggling over to either the honey symbol or that live preview 
in the far bottom left is that your downloads and uploads will go a little bit faster if you're on those tabs. Now your mapping period goes from Monday through Sunday and your cutoff period for getting those uploaded is that following Tuesday at 3.59 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. But I do highly recommend just making it part of your process and getting them uploaded every single day because if you're driving a lot, you are gonna fill that camera up and you don't wanna miss out on getting credit for any of the driving that you're doing. So I do think it's best practice to just get in the routine of getting it uploaded every single day. Now you can also track your upload activity on the HiveMapper Explorer by going to hivemapper.com forward slash explore forward slash contributors forward slash and then typing in your unique driver ID, which you can find in the settings tab in the app, but you need to enter it all lowercase with a dash in between each word. So in this case, it'd be Flirty Corn Warrior. And this is going to allow you to see how many kilometers you're uploading by day, as well as other metrics, like how much honey you've earned in total. Now, I will say that sometimes the kilometers are a little bit delayed, but I know the team is working on getting these updated more quickly so that you can have better insight into your upload activity. Now, the last aspect of this is the camera placement, and this is as important as anything. So I highly recommend you get the secondary mount. I use this with every single driver in my fleet, and I do have it linked below. You can get it off Amazon, but I do a side mount. And then what you want to do is get it positioned as high up on the windshield as possible. And I generally try to get it as high up and centered as possible. And this will allow you to get it really close to the windshield. And that eliminates a lot of the obstructions or other obstacles that might get in the frame of view. And you're going to want to tilt that back more than you would think because of the way that this lens works. But your whole goal here is to get as much of the street as you can while minimizing the hood of the vehicle. And if you have anything on your dashboard, I highly recommend taking it off because you can create a glare that gets captured in that image. But the camera placement is really, really important if you want to get full credit for everything. Now, one last thing with this mount that I really like is depending on your parking situation, you might want to take this thing down at night, especially with how hard these cameras are to get right now. And with this mount, it makes it really easy. So you can actually just undo the mount and take the whole thing down all at once. And it makes it really easy to put it back in place and keep that camera placement in the exact same position. Now, you do have the option of also doing an external camera. I personally have not done that with any of my drivers, but that does really allow you to get very good imagery and absolutely maximize rewards. If you do want to learn how to do an external mount, Discord is a really good resource for you to connect with people that have a lot of experience with that. Now I want to talk about some of the common pitfalls that I see across members of my fleet, things that I've run into myself, because let's face it, this is proprietary hardware and they have to create software that works with it across different operating systems and things aren't always going to go perfectly smoothly. And there's also some nuances with this. So one of the most common things I see is a driver will call me and say, I can't get the numbers to move from the middle to the top right. And I would say the top cause of this is, well, you got logged out of your wallet. So go into that settings tab, make sure that your phantom wallet is linked up. Sometimes if you get a new version of the app or I don't know, sometimes it just logs you out. So just make sure that you're logged into that wallet. And it makes sense because they need to know who to credit that imagery to. And if your wallet's not logged in, it has a safeguard in place to prevent you from uploading imagery to ensure that you get credit for it. The next thing you want to check for is making sure that you're connected to the Wi-Fi of the camera. And again, if you're on an Android, make sure you're doing that through the app itself where it prompts you to connect to the dash cam Wi-Fi. The third thing I see most, people say, I don't get it. The numbers aren't moving. I have the app open. Well, you can't just have the app open. It has to be in the foreground. So you need to have that app open and visible on your screen. And here's an extra tip for Android users. So a lot of drivers will keep this app open as they drive. But in many cases with Android, the longest you can keep your phone from going to sleep is 10 minutes. And unless you interact with the phone. There's a way around this though. So if you go into the settings and you go to where the operating system is listed, you click on that seven times and then you say open Sesame and spin in three circles. I'm just kidding, but you do have to hit it seven times. That will unlock developer settings. Now, depending on what type of Android you're using, this might be located in a different area of the phone, but you need to navigate to those developer settings. This is going to allow you to enable this option to keep your phone from going to sleep as long as it's plugged in. So I highly recommend enabling this option if you are planning on keeping the app open as you drive so it can download and upload seamlessly. The next thing I would check for is make sure that you have the newest version of the app because HiMapper is constantly pushing out updates, which is a good thing, but you always do want to make sure you have the newest version of the app. And to that end, make sure you have the newest firmware. So always double check when you connect to the dash cam and that settings tab to see if the firmware is updating or if the firmware has already updated completely and you need to reboot that camera. But this is also important to keep an eye on because you don't want to unplug the camera and power it off in the middle of a firmware update. So always check that out when you first connect to the dash cam, especially Especially after an app update because these firmware updates actually get pushed from the phone to the dash cam. And if none of those things work, a couple last things I would try, just close the app and reopen it to reestablish that connection. And if all else fails, I have had 
had to a couple of times, delete the app from the phone itself and reinstall it. But keep in mind, if you do that, you are gonna lose the imagery that's on the phone. So if you have imagery that hasn't been uploaded yet, that's definitely a consideration. Now, if none of those things fix your issue, you can always go into Discord and there are a lot of resources. You can contact the team. They're very responsive on there. If you're part of a fleet, your fleet manager should be helping you out with this stuff. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If there's something that you incorporate in your process that I didn't cover, please put it in the comments below. And as always, I appreciate your viewership. Signing off, this is Bradley Meyer with the Deep End Connection.